<laughs> Next testifier. We're down to about a minute. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, Brandon Borges, I'm the chair of Sensible Change Minnesota. I'm the policy arm of our volunteer-based nonprofit, Sensible Minnesota. I'm also an attorney. I practice in criminal law and some family law. Uh, since 2015, Sensible Minnesota has worked with around 500 patients. Uh, the reason we're talking uh, with you today is that in Minnesota, we have legalized oil and concentrate for patients to get access to our medical cannabis system. Now, uh, we've also been successful in petitioning the Commissioner of Health for the inclusion of PTSD, autism, and Alzheimer's disease. Um, back in 2014, when this law was first passed, the medical cannabis law, it was estimated that around 30,000 patients would be helped, but today that number is sitting around 15,000 registered patients. Those, those people are still out there, and they're still using cannabis, uh, and they're choosing, by and large, from what we can tell from our patient groups, to use uh, concentrated cannabis products because it's not something that they smoke, and many people stay away from that. Um, as of February 28th, there were 15,331 patients currently enrolled in the program, and over 7,000 of those uh, who were once registered but either dropped their enrollment, either to due to the high cost or they passed away. Uh, according to the January 2019 Medical Cannabis Program update, um, fewer than 11,000 of the Minnesotans, near, Minnesotans nearly 15,000 registered patients have made a purchase from a registered state manufacturer. So, so the reason I'm talking about this today is that patients in Minnesota have to pay quite a bit more to access uh, what, what I would like to see potentially included in this bill as an amendment at some point, uh, which is concentrates. And in, in Illinois and uh, Arizona, on adult use or uh, markets in Oregon, for example, that same medicine is available for less than 10 cents per milligram, where we're paying around 18 to 24 cents per milligram in Minnesota. So it's a very substantial cost, cost difference. As the criminal defense attorney, I get contacts from patients that call our uh, firm and ask us to uh, represent them in cases where they brought these concentrates from other states because they can't afford them here. Um, and if they happen to transport them in Minnesota, they happen to have over $100 of concentrate in their vehicle. That's registered under Minnesota state law as a conveyance device, and they can kiss their vehicle goodbye as well. So, so Mr. Borges, I'm going to ask you to wrap it up. Yep, that's, that's exactly it. While uh, I do appreciate uh, and understand as a defense attorney and as a representative of this organization that, uh, that this bill is going in the right direction, we would definitely like to see incorporated into the amendments, and we'll have discussions, of course, with the other uh, county attorneys associations involved to try to get the, uh, protections for our patients because we need to put our patients first. These are sick people in Minnesota. So thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Borges. I want to thank everyone for... Uh, please, please, there should be no demonstrations at a committee hearing here. I, I want to thank everyone uh, for the questioning, for the discussion, for the testimony here today. I thought it was a very rich session. I certainly walked out of here uh, learning uh, quite a bit more. Representative Dean, I'll have you um, last word, and then uh, we'll uh, move to lay the bill over. Sure. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee men or members. I appreciate your support. Very well. With that, the <coughs> chair lays over House File 2013 for possible inclusion of the omnibus bill.